If we asked you to list some of your favorite video game characters, odds are most of them would be human, or at least humanoid, and any representatives of the animal kingdom would be anthropomorphized bandicoots, hedgehogs, and the like. Sure, they might have animal characteristics, but in this video, we'll be putting the spotlight on the true video game representatives of the animal kingdom. But while all of the furry, feathered, or finned friends you're about to see are exceptional in some way, be it in terms of their bravery, intelligence, or some kind of fantastical power, they are still examples of real-life critters in video game form. And in our eyes, that just makes them even more special. For variety's sake, and so the video doesn't become exclusively about dogs, we've stuck to one entry per species, and so we've corralled quite the diverse selection of distinctive zoological specimens into our digital menagerie, all for the amusement of you, the viewer. Don't worry though, all of our animals are treated well and are fed and watered daily. Everyone here at Triple Jump is a proud naturalist. N no, put your shirt back on, James. I said naturalist, not naturist. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best animals in video games. Number 10. Kuma, the Tekken series. If the Tekken lore is to be believed, Kuma is your common or garden bear who was taken in and trained by crazy-haired martial arts master Heihachi, eventually becoming his bodyguard. Known for his ferocity, Kuma was also able to learn fighting styles, sign language, and could even understand basic Japanese, meaning that, yes, he is indeed smarter than the average bear. We're definitely not questioning Kuma's brain power or fighting credentials, but we do have concerns to raise about his species. In in Tekken 1, he took the form of an Asian black bear, but in Tekken 2, his colouring and appearance resembled that of a Japanese brown bear. And then there are his alternate outfits, if you can call them that, which basically amount to different colouring, making him look like another species altogether. Sadly, Kuma passed away of old age after the second Tekken tournament, but was replaced by his son, also called Kuma. Acting as Tekken's resident furball ever since, Kuma too was shown to be even more intelligent than his late father, and is much gentler too, if the situation calls for it. He can also apparently read, and he's been to space. Okay, this guy is definitely a lot smarter than the average bear. Not sure about his fashion sense, though. Number 9. The Cat, Stray. Not all heroes wear capes, and if the story of 2022 feline-centric adventure game Stray is to be believed, not all heroes have opposable thumbs either, as its unnamed protagonist is a humble kitty on a quest to bring light to a dark and dreary city. Stray, or Stray, no, never mind, developed by Blue 12 Studio, takes place in a rainy cyberpunk city where humans have long since bitten the dust. Primarily inhabited by robotic beings who develop sentient since the disappearance of their human masters, the sprawling walled metropolis provides plenty of nooks and crannies for an intrepid mog to explore, as well as opportunities for platforming and puzzle solving using the feline protagonist's cat-like agility and street smarts. I say cat-like, I mean, it is a cat. With no humans left to befriend, our pussycat protagonist develops a heartwarming relationship with a drone called B12 instead, and the two of them form quite the charismatic duo. Duo. The nameless cat from Stray was reportedly inspired by the cats belonging to the developers, and the team behind the game studied countless cat images and videos for research purposes. Unfortunately though, claiming you're watching cat videos on the internet for research purposes really just doesn't cut it in most other jobs. Believe me, I've tried. Number 8. Deborah and Jeff, Kiwi a two-for-one entry now, as adorable, hard-working Kiwi duo Deborah and Jeff always come in a pair. In real life, the Kiwi is a small flightless bird endemic to New Zealand. These feathery friends are mostly active at night and scurry around forest floors in search of seeds, bugs, and worms. As far as we're aware, though, they show little to no interest in working in the public sector, and that's what makes Deborah and Jeff so special. In the Stone Wheat and Sons developed Kiwi, Deborah and Jeff work for the bungalow basin telepost office, moving letters around, taking care of miscellaneous issues that crop up, and 
typing telegrams with their adorably round Kiwi butts. The game can be played by one or two players, and most missions involve sending an important or occasionally frivolous telegram to the right recipient, ensuring the correct postcode and label is applied to each piece of correspondence. Deborah and Jeff also use their butts to apply said labels. A number of other animals are also employed in this unusual postal facility, including a group of cassowaries, which are also flightless birds but have more of a dinosaur thing going on, and head administrator Zoe the Octopus, presumably because the developers saw Finding Dory and thought it was cool. That's my theory, anyway. Number 7. Fenrir and Garm, God of War Ragnarok Garm from God of War Ragnarok doesn't really qualify for this list on account of being a gigantic Hades-dwelling end-of-the-world wolf, which, as far as we're aware, does not exist in real life. At least, I hope not. Fenrir, on the other hand, is a normal wolf, who originally seems to have only a very small part to play in Kratos and Atreus' story. However, the two wolves eventually become one and give birth to a wild card entry! Didn't see that coming! Atreus' pet wolf Fenrir is already sick and elderly at the start of the game. Not far into the story, the wolf passes away in a touching scene where observant players might notice a mysterious floating light. Without even realising what he was doing, Atreus used his burgeoning powers to transfer Fenrir's soul into his knife. Later, Atreus and Kratos are exploring Helheim and come across a gigantic soulless wolf known as Garm. This big boy was chained up due to its ability to tear holes in reality, but it's freed by Atreus and goes on a rampage. Realising the mistake, Atreus and Kratos pursue Garm and defeat it, and Atreus transfers Fenrir's soul into Garm's body. Suddenly, the protagonists have a very scary but very friendly ally in their fight against Odin. And a lovely new pet, too. It might get them some funny looks at the park, though. Number 6. Icaros, Assassin's Creed Odyssey if there's one surefire way of looking cool and getting lots of attention, it's walking around with an eagle perched on your hand. Cassandra from Assassin's Creed Odyssey knows this very well, and also knows how to get even more utility out of an eagle companion thanks to the bond she shares with her beaked buddy, Icaros. Named after the famous Icarus of Greek mythology who flew too close to the sun, Icarus the Golden Eagle experiences no such wax-based mishaps, always knowing the optimum altitude for safe flight. Passed on to Cassandra by her father, renowned scholar, philosopher, and mathematician Pythagoras, Icarus proves invaluable to the protagonists as they undertake dangerous missions across ancient Greece. Unlike Senyu, Bayek's eagle companion from Assassin's Creed Origins, Icarus can help in combat and is able to distract, damage, and even kill human enemies, as well as provide eagle vision which allows Cassandra to see through his eyes, granting her a tactical advantage. He's based basically the ancient Greek equivalent of some kind of modern reconnaissance and attack drone, which actually kind of makes sense when you consider that Ubisoft are no strangers to drones with franchises like Ghost Recon under their belts. Come to think of it, they probably just took a Ghost Recon drone and stuck feathers on it. That's how game development works, right? Number 5. Rue, the Streets of Rage series Originating in Streets of Rage 3 on the Mega Drive, chain and short sporting kangaroo Roo is initially encountered as a one-off mini-boss fight along with his handler, Bruce. This sinister-looking clown fellow will try to stay out of reach, using his whip on the player and on Roo, and generally being a despicable man. Take him down before defeating the hapless marsupial, however, and Roo will dash off into the night, grateful at being freed from the killer clown's clutches. From this point on, Rue becomes playable, meaning the pugilistic macropod has joined the team of vigilantes. He later shows up in the Mr. X Nightmare DLC from Streets of Rage 4, retaining his status as a secret character with a moveset that incorporates jabs, kicks, and tail swipes. As absurd as all of this may seem at first glance, Rue's attributes are actually based on the tendency of real-life kangaroos to adopt a boxing-like stance when fighting each other, behaviour which has seen the boxing kangaroo become a part of popular culture, especially in its native Australia. The aforementioned Tekken series even had their own interpretation of this in the form of Roger. We can't find anything about kangaroos serving drinks at a bar, though, so we can only assume that the Streets of Rage developers added this attribute simply because it was cool. I'll have a Foster's, please, mate. Thanks very much. 
Number 4. Epona, The Legend of Zelda series When it comes to the most beloved steeds in video games, it's difficult to argue against Epona, whose clippity-clop sounds form an integral part of one of the most iconic title screens in video gaming history. First introduced in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Epona is initially encountered at Lon Lon Ranch, where young Link befriends her by learning Epona's song on his ocarina. When Link returns to the ranch as an adult, he can win the now fully grown mare when nefarious owner Ingo puts her up as collateral in a horse race. One quick escape later, and a series-spanning friendship is formed. Returning in Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess, Epona has always felt special, offering Link new combat options and the ability to get to previously inaccessible areas. She also appears in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom if you've got the right amiibo, but no matter what game she's in, the bond she shares with Link never fails to warm the heart. There are other great horses in video games of course, but when it comes to legendary steed status, Epona wins by a nose, beating out the likes of Roach, Shadow Mere, and oh, uh, that horse from Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, I can't believe I forgot his name. How embarrassing. I'm gonna get so much aggro for this. Number 3. The Goose, Untitled Goose Game Most of the animals on this list are kind souls with heroic dispositions and noble goals. However, this is not the case with The Goose from Untitled Goose Game. This feathered felon just wants to watch the world burn one petty crime at a time. Set in a quiet English village, Untitled Goose Game puts players in control of a goose with a penchant for provocation and a mind for mayhem. The village is split into a number of different areas, each with a to-do list of objectives that basically boil down to various unnecessarily mean and destructive acts, such as making off with items belonging to the villagers, damaging property, and generally being an intimidating surly goose. As fun as this all is though, we can't help but feeling that this wayward waterfowl is treading on thin ice. It only needs to push one of these villagers too far, and the results could be disastrous and yet festively delicious. After all, this is a rural village, and a rural village means farmers, and farmers have shotguns and ovens. Are we making our point yet? Still, even if this goose is destined to end up as the centerpiece of some vengeful villager's Christmas dinner, you just have to admire a life spent so dedicated to the art of sowing chaos, anarchy, and disorder. Number 2. Repeat Tales of Vesperia there's a lot of competition for the status of gaming's literal top dog. The likes of Fable, Dragon Age, and Fallout have all featured charismatic canine companions, those adorable Nintendogs were once a handheld phenomenon, and even that insufferable mutt from Duck Hunt has its fans. We thought we'd come at you from a different angle, though, and talk about what makes Rapid from Tales of Vesperia such a special little guy. Originally released in 2008 for the Xbox 360, Tales of Vesperia tells the story of Yuri, a swordsman on an epic quest to save the world from a supernatural threat. He'll forge many close friendships along the way, but starts the game pre-bonded with his loyal hound, Rapide. A fully-fledged party member with an agility-based fighting style, Rapide can come across as aloof, but hides many layers under that fluffy blue surface. When not wielding deadly blades in his mouth, Rapide will always be seen holding a pipe, which is a memento of his former master and he sticks with Yuri through thick and thin despite a somewhat murky past between them. Sure, other gaming dogs might be cuter, but who would you want backing you up in a fight? This guy or a fearless, blade-wielding battlehound? <laughs> no, actually, that, that is quite a close call. I, I'm not sure, to be honest. And number one, Echo, the Echo the Dolphin series. Echo first appeared in 1992's Echo the Dolphin for the Mega Drive and instantly became something of a household name. Back then, a game where you leap and dash through the waves as a lovable dolphin was quite the novelty, and it proved massively popular despite being basically one long and increasingly frustrating water level. Outside of its punishing difficulty and esoteric level design though, Echo the Dolphin had an atmosphere and mystique that catapulted its aquatic protagonist to super 
stardom. In real life, dolphins are known for their intelligence and cognitive abilities, but Echo shows exceptional intellect even compared to his real-world counterparts, and he's been seen to converse with other species such as blue whales and orcas, interact with mysterious ocean crystals using sound waves, and even operate a time machine. Sure, this may seem a little far-fetched, but do we really know what dolphins are doing down there beneath the waves? We can't keep an eye on all of them all the time, after all. Real-world dolphin conspiracy theories aside, though, it can't be denied that Sega's underwater adventurer almost single-handedly, a uh, single fin edly saved the world's oceans from a rampant, all-consuming alien threat. He's a hero from tail to bottlenose, and that's a sentiment we can all echo.